captures in this area started around 1966 when entire pods were rounded up. Whales, mostly young whales, were removed. In about a 10 year period, we had 58 whales taken out. And uh, there were about 70 left when that capture era was over. And we found that they were resident here and that uh, if they kept up that kind of activity, they were going to basically remove all of the, the growing stock. We were going to be out of whales in another 10 years if they kept it up. Well, in 1970, I was hired to be a diver and work on the whale capture. So we ended up down here in Penn Cove, and uh, that's where it all happened. The actual capture was uh, 100 yards off of that uh, pier right over there. The holding pen was just a big circular net that was put down and uh, trying to get the smaller ones to work them into this little corral area and uh, and that's where the animals died they got caught in the net and drowned and although they were guys hired to patrol that for that purpose you know uh, stuff happened you know that did um, we'd had a couple of three die and they came and got us, and I guess they'll get a permit for six or so, and if you lose some, way, well, they're not on your permit, well, you haven't got them. So they had us cut the animals that were already dead open and put rocks inside their cavity there and put anchors around their tail and sink them. It was because of publicity and the money. Anyway, we had released them all, and they we took uh, the last one over to the uh, dock, and and, uh, and all of the animals that were in the holding pen and the animals that hadn't been caught at all came over to the dock right where we were loading the last baby and uh, stayed there. And they just communicated back and forth and, and it was, uh, it was just awful. You know, the, the terror of just uh, ripping that baby animal away from its mother like that and uh, when as soon as that stretcher left the water when the baby whale was no longer in the water that was the last of the communication and they knew it and they just would just kind of like they took a deep breath and they just all turned at one time and they swam out of pin cove and they tell me they haven't been back since and it was 28 years ago At that particular time, we had other animals in the net. We were busy. I was sorry that we did kill the animals, but there was nothing I could do. They were already dead. And I had to be concerned about the live animals. So we split open their stomachs, put anchors on them, and sunk them, because no one else would take them. And that's, that's what happened. I did not advertise the fact that I lost them. I don't like to lose them. But uh, I did lose them, and uh, no one would take them. So I wasn't going out and put up a big billboard. I, I killed X amount of animals. I did it, and uh, that was it. It was just that simple. Uh, I care more about these animals than all the environmentals put together. I think my ex-partner and myself have done more for these animals than all environmental groups put together. We've showed the public what they are like. They're beautiful animals. Well, anyway, um, uh, when we were loading them on from the water onto the truck, terror of the, the uh, separation. Well, that's the worst thing that, that I ever did and er, that ever happened to me in my life. Is there any questions or you just want to stand there and watch a grown man cry? <laughs> it changed my whole life and uh, it uh, I very seldom can get through it without breaking down and it's embarrassing and I don't, I don't tell the story very often, but it, uh, I just 
it, it, it just, it's a very strong thing that happened. And uh, if people realized that every time they bought a ticket to see one of these animals, that they're supporting that kind of thing, I don't think they would spend the money to go to, to go do that because nobody would want to see what I what I saw. Now, now I'm against any animal like that in captivity, whether it's an ape or gorilla or whatever, you know, I just don't think it's right. And uh, once you see that, what I, what I saw, what I try, what I try to explain, uh, I don't see how anybody could see it any different. Well, when the uh, first captives went on display, uh, I went to see the early SeaWorld parks, and uh, I was amazed at how much could be learned by having the entire animal visible, by being able to draw blood and samples from it, uh, how trainable they were. But there was just a limit to all that. It was like uh, studying a fish in a bowl. It had nothing to do with the system that it came from. And uh, it took long enough to learn about how to keep them alive in that bowl. Now we have to uh, translate some of that knowledge and all of what we get from the wild to learn how to keep them alive out here.